Uh, good night of Shabbos and good afternoon from beautiful, sunny Boston today. We just finished the holiday of Passover. You know, many have the tradition that when they finish the Haggadah, they say, Chasal Sidur Pesach. We're done with the Passover Seder. But in Chabad, the Alter Rebbe, the founder of the Chabad movement, who wrote the Siddur and the Code of Jewish Law, didn't put that in. And the reason is, because although Passover is over, leaving Egypt is a year-long task. The fact, that's why the Torah commands us every single day to remember the Exodus. Because leaving Egypt is about a transformation. It's about a paradigm shift. It's about shifting the way we think, the way we act, the way we behave. And it's interesting, because we're now in the Sphere at the Omer period. The Sphere at the Omer period is when we count the Sphira. Every single day, we count. 49 days from when we left Egypt till the revelation at Sinai. From liberation to revelation is 49 days, and on the 50th day is the giving of the Torah. And it's interesting, because usually when you travel from one space to the other, usually you measure in kilometers and miles, you don't measure in time. You measure the distance of one place from the other, not the time it takes to go. So why, when the Torah asks us to count our liberation from Exodus, from Egypt, to Sinai, to receive the Torah, the Torah tells us to count time, not space. And the answer is a remarkable one, and something that's so important. You see, the two most definitive things in this world is space and time. We have time, 24 hours makes a day, then you have a week, then you have a month, then you have a year, and that's the span of our lifetime. And then there's space. Space is the space that I take, that I, the human beings are always more focused Human, human beings are always more focused on the space than on the time. We're always looking to acquire land, to have more, a bigger home, a nicer car, a better portfolio. In fact, if someone tries to invade your space and take over a piece of your land, you'll go crazy, you'll go to court, you sue them and you'll win. But imagine if you went to the judge and said, you know, this guy started talking to me and he took my time. The judge would throw it out as a frivolous case because big deal, what are you going to say, someone took your time? When it comes to our land and our space, we're so possessive and we're always focused on gaining more. And that's what man wants their whole life. They want to acquire more land than more land. Yet when it comes to our time, there's even the expression, I'm killing time. Eh, who cares about the time, right? But in truth, time is the most valuable possession. It's the thing that is most important to us. It's the gift that actually makes who we are, the way we spend our time. And what the Torah is really trying to tell us, that in order to transform from a slave, from liberation to actually revelation, to be able to receive the Torah, we need to be counting time, not space. It's not about the kilometers you acquire. It's about the time you have and the way you spend it. One of the greatest talks, thoughts that the previous Rebbe said from his father was that if a day is a day, if a minute is a minute, if a second is a second, then a minute is a minute, then an hour is an hour, then a day is a day, then a week is a week, then a month is a month, then a year is a year, and then a lifetime is a lifetime worth living. But if a second is not a second, and the day won't be a, then the minute won't be a minute, and the hour won't be an hour, then the day won't be a day, and there won't be a value to life. And that's the message in the crux of Sphere at Omer, this remarkable time when we count Omer, to be able to focus on that which is important, and that is the time. What are you doing this hour, this day, this week? You know, the first days of Passover, we had three days of, three days of holiday where we didn't touch our phone. Thursday, Friday, and Shabbat. 
And I thought about how much time I was able to save by not being on my phone. The message of Lagu, of, of Sfirat Omer is that we don't finish Pesach, but the way we transition from Passover to <coughs> Shavuot is by counting and cherishing our time. You know, before Yisker, I spoke to the people, and I told them about this elder statement who came to Israel from Europe, and he saw this innovative, um, remarkable, beautiful country, so young yet so mature. And he said, I have one question, where are all the statues? There's no statues of all your heroes. We're the heirs of the Tanakh. We're the people that have the greatest history. Yet there's no statues of Abraham, Moses. No statues of Sarah, Rebecca, King David, Solomon. And I answered it with a letter that the Rebbe had, a remarkable letter. The Rebbe, someone told the Rebbe there was a dispute between two, a few siblings about what to write at the epitaph on the tombstone of their father. And they asked the Rebbe for advice. And first the Rebbe told them, write, look what your father wrote for his parents and then you'll see what was important to him. But then the Rebbe said, I want to tell you something else. You see, the Rebbe said, there's two types of epitaphs uh, that we write on the tombstones we erect for our parents. One is the physical one. It never changes. It's what you write to speak about the virtues and about the impact and the accomplishments of the person who passed away. You write it once in stone, you engrave it, and that epitaph stays forever. But then there's another epitaph, and that's the one that's evolving and changing. And that's the one when the children go around and live a life of value, of meaning. Because very often, if not mostly, children are a mirror of their parents. And when we conduct ourselves in a certain way and act in a way of spirituality, of Torah, of kindness, then we're the greatest epitaph to our parents because people see our parents in us and that's always changing with the way we act. And the Rebbe says, I would recommend you focus more on the second epitaph than the first one. The message is a powerful one. We don't have monuments. We don't have statues for people because they live within us. We don't need to know how Abraham, Moses, Isaac, David, look, because we know we see them in every Jewish home and the way people live. It's the time we use to impact in a positive way. And I told them two stories. One was from Yuli Elston, who was the health minister in Israel. And he was one of the greatest refuseniks. And he was put into prison in the 70s in Russia for trying to go to Israel. He spent three years locked in solitary confinement until finally they were going to give him his so-called day in court. But he was happy because his mother and his wife were going to come. And he figured at least he'll get to see them. But in their cruelty, the KGB made a human block of all the KGB agents not to let him see his wife and his mother who hadn't seen him in three years. And he thought to himself, I have nothing to lose. So he pushed through the KGB agents. And he got a glimpse of his mother and his wife. And what do you think he asked them? If you had one moment and you could say, I love you, how are you? He looked at his wife and he said, tell me what night of Hanukkah is it? And his wife showed him that it was the second night. And that night, and immediately after, the KGB agents pushed him away and he wasn't able to see her again. But that night he lit two candles. That's the monuments we make. That's the epitaph we have. And the tombstones we erect for our parents and our loved ones by the way we act. Let us recognize the time that's so valuable. Not focus so much on the space, but the time that we have and the things that we do with our time. May God bless you. May have a great Shabbos. And may we all march on towards Sinai and ultimately have revelation from God. God bless you. Have a Shabbat Shalom.